So, getting back to compressibility, what we had was yes, just add it and uh, mention the group number also. Okay. So, what we had was P times Vm by Rt is equal to Z, right? And what we had seen was that if the volume, the molar volume is larger than the ideal volume, then it's the repulsion forces which are dominant, whereas if it's smaller, <coughs> it's the attractive force. So, that's the kind of graph that you see. So, intermolecular potential. See, mostly it's only when the muscles come very close that they feel the repulsions. It's got to be because of the electronic clouds or the nuclei start rebelling. So they have to be very close. So that's the region over here where you see the repulsions. Otherwise, at larger <laughs> separations, it's the attractions that dominate. That's, that's something natural. And if you are at much larger separations, in case of an ideal gas, where the volumes are very large or the pressures are very low, then you don't have any. What's that thing? Zero potentially. Okay. Now, if I come back to Z, the compression factor or the compressibility, and I look at some of these graphs over here, Z is equal to 1 for a ideal gas or an ideal gas. So that's where it goes, z is equal to 1. Yeah. Maybe we can even do that over here. So z is equal to 1 goes this line, right? And <coughs> in most cases, z is less than 1, okay? But you can, you can very well imagine that if we are, this is the x axis is the pressure axis, right? And if we are at very low pressures, then we are going to follow the ideal gas flow. So if we are at very, very low pressures somewhere over there, then of course z is close to 1. At very low pressures. But as soon as the pressure goes, look at the scales. These are 200 atmospheres. Each division is 200 atmospheres, right? So these are really huge pressures. On the other hand, normal atmosphere, the one, one atmosphere or so is a very small pressure. So these are pressures that are more like ideal gas. You don't have to worry about it. So if the so if Z is less than one, that means the volume is smaller, which means mostly attractions dominate. That's normal. In certain cases. But that depends on the structure of the molecule. We will not go into those details. What we can also see is that this <coughs> this particular thing Z, we have just said that you know Z is a constant for the moment. You see, Z is not a constant. If you see all for methane, ethane, or hydrogen, even, it's not a straight line. Z can't be a constant. So, a more general form of this equation is called the Virial equation. Where Z can be a function of temperature and it is defined as 1 plus B prime T times pressure plus C prime T times pressure square plus so on and so forth or equivalently it is defined as 1 plus B T by motor volume plus C T by molar volume, the square of it. This is a very useful mathematical tool 
Yeah, you can expand any function in terms of a power series. That's what this is. So if I have a function like that, you know, any arbitrary function <coughs> coming down and going up, oscillating, whatever, I can keep on adding powers plus d t q plus e t to the power four, so on and so forth, and finally I'll get an accurate description of my function. Yes. So essentially, this particular one, the BDS equation, <coughs> is the most general of all equations. Okay. Because yes, we can just put, keep on putting these constants and keep on putting more terms and get an accurate decision. Uh, as far as chemical engineers are concerned, these are very important equations when you want to design something, right? Because you get exactly the values, right? you can exactly uh, get the description of the gas. If you want to design a reactor, for example, all these values are tabulated for each and every gas. So, each coefficient, this is a virial coefficient, right? each coefficient depends on the temperature. So for each and every temperature, the value of the coefficient changes. But if you have a table in front of you, you can always look up the table and get all the values. So it's very important if you want to design something, right? Otherwise, we need to go to some more useful equations like the Van der Waals equation, which is a parameter equation, the just two parameters. And here you have so many parameters and each one changes as a function of temperature, right? Okay. Now, if I look at this form of the equation, this form of this description of the compressibility factor, or the compression factor, sorry, I see if, you know, if I'm at very low pressures, then I know, okay, this equation is sufficient, right? And Z is equal to one, I can say that. And at very low pressures or large volumes, the gas behaves like an ideal gas, right? But now if I look at this equation, okay, or if you look at those curves, you know that it actually does not, there is a slope, right? So. Essentially, even if I am at a very low pressure, the slope is still not zero. Yes. If I am at a very low pressure, and if I want to see the slope, then it's dz by dp. For example, let's just write that down. So I would have dz by dp, which which would be equal to b prime plus 2cp, right, if I look, uh, I'll just remove the temperature dependence, it's there, okay, the function of temperature, huh, c prime, sure, c prime, okay, this prime does not have anything to do, not there, sorry, it doesn't have to do anything with differentiation, it's just a different constant. Just like okay. Plus so on and so forth, right? And if I go to very low pressures, P approaching zero, what I get is dz by dp is equal to B prime. Right? So what I want to emphasize over here is that even though at very low pressures, dv is equal to nrt is an equation you can use, but still all the properties are not the same because the properties depend on the slope, on the second derivative and so on and so forth. So all the properties of the real gas do not become the same as that of ideal gas. And for that, you could look at this particular graph, the third one on the right. That's the perfect gas again. And now, this is a boil temperature. What we call boil temperature is that when this. So before I go into that, what I want to tell you is that these all these B prime, C prime, and so on and so forth, these coefficients diminish in value. Right? B prime has the largest contribution because you know that the linear part has the largest contribution. 
then the quadratic part term has next larger contribution, so on and so forth, right? The higher terms are much smaller. So what matters most is the first term, the first median coefficient, p prime or p. If somehow I can make it to zero, then at least whatever property that depends on the first derivative would be the same as that of ideal terms. Right? If you look at this region, the small region over here, right, the slope is almost 0. It coincides with that of the perfect gas in this small region. So, now remember that B or B prime is a function of temperature. If I can find some temperature, at which this B or B prime is 0, then that temperature is called the Boyle's temperature, Pb, right. So, at some temperature, if B prime T approaches 0, as P is, P is small, right, pressure is small, normally it is very small. So that particular temperature is to be called the Boyle's temperature. This was in 1878 or something, right? 1873, when he proposed this equation of state, that was his part of his PhD. Uh, Van der Waals got the Nobel Prize in 1910 in physics. Uh, what he did was something to make a general statement for all these gases. Okay. There are some attractive terms, there are some repulsive terms, which we have already seen. So the equation, there must be some attractions in the, between the molecules, there must be some repulsion that we need to account for those. How do we account for those? If these molecules repel, that means they have some volume and these are hard spheres. So once these two spheres come close, then they will start. Okay. So use use the parameter B. Okay. So the Van der Waals equation. Yeah. So what he used was this parameter. Before I get into that, let me tell you. What he wanted to show was that the idealized volume. Uh, pressure idealized times volume ideal is equal to nRT, right? This is what he wants to show. This is the ideal pressure that should be there, right? But the pressure exerted by the gas is something different. That I denote by P and the volume by V. So the volume V that is available to the gas molecules would be ideal minus n times b okay <coughs> so that's what the ideal volume would be right? and the ideal pressure would be seen like this so let's say we have let's say we have some ideal pressure right? and all these molecules are essentially going and hitting the wall. That's how the pressure is created, right? The molecules hit the wall of the container. And there are some molecules on the back which are stopping it. So 
This depends on the force with which they are stroking and the frequency. And both of them depend on the concentration of the molecule. Right? So which means both of them depend on n by v, which is the concentration of the molecule. n by v times n by v. n by v square times a some proportionality constant. Okay. So the pressure exerted would be pressure ideal minus yes just a moment just a moment just a moment first i messed up over there it should be v ideal plus nb because v ideal is a smaller volume and nb is the volume of the sphere okay sorry for that so pressure ideal minus a times n square by v square right that's what i want and then i replace the values of v ideal and p ideal in the equation okay let's do it so it depends one on the force force and second on the frequency of the both of them would depend on the concentration, which is n by v. Well, this is this is a hand waving argument. If you want a proper derivation, you have to go to stat statistical thermodynamics, which is uh, not in this course. Yes. Sorry. Why did it take? There was some question. No. No. Okay. So there is an ideal pressure minus whatever the force of the molecules is being exerted right these molecules are stopping this particular molecule from hitting the wall and that's why that minus a n squared by v squared terms come come in so the equation then would be simply v plus a n squared by v squared times v minus n b is equal to that n has gone nrt so that's your van der waals equation now as for the van der waals equation you just have two parameters a and b and they don't depend on temperature right so that's very easy If you look at some of these isotherms, the Van der Waals equations describe these isotherms very beautifully. Okay. Now, <coughs> this particular isotherm is for carbon dioxide. Okay. At these positions over here, it's just a gas. Fine. When I lower the temperature, so I'm at a high temperature, 50 degrees. So I think this curve is for 50 degrees. Then the next one, 40 degrees. 31.04 is the critical temperature for carbon dioxide. Okay. It cannot be liquefied if the temperature is above 31.04 degrees. That's the definition of critical temperature. Now, if you look, this curve has already started bending over here. Yeah. And at the critical temperature, it's that is 31.04. This is a kind of a supercritical fluid over here. There's no distinction between a liquid and a gas essentially. If I look at the curve A, B, C, D, which is below the critical temperature, what happens is I start applying some pressure. Right. So Let's say I'm sitting at A and I start applying some pressure. So we have some arrangement of this cylinder with the piston and I start applying some pressure at 20 degrees. I maintain the temperature, right? So it goes from A to B to C. Till here, there's no problem. And immediately at C, all these things are in equilibrium, right? The piston slides in. 
there is no pressure required and the piston just goes in. The liquid state and the gas are in equilibrium. And this one you see it rises vertically, very sharp one, which means you have to apply a lot of pressure now to compress it, which is true in the case of liquids or solids. If you want to compress a liquid or solid, you need to apply a lot of pressure. Okay. Now, this is experimental. Van der Waals equations, the Van der Waals equation reproduces this data very nicely as far as you are in the gaseous state. Okay. But you can well imagine that the Van der Waals equation cannot give you the line CDE because it is a cubic equation in V. Right. A cubic equation would give you only three roots for a particular pressure. Right. Uh, some of you have already solved the cube and you have seen that it is a cubic equation. Right. So, what it would give is perhaps point C, point D, and point D, or something. Right. Maybe I have some example over here. Yeah, this is what the Van der Waals isotherms would look like. So it goes up and then it goes down. This is not possible. It's not feasible, right? Why? The pressure goes down, the volume goes down. That's not possible, right? So this is what is happening. We need to correct for this. What Maxwell suggested was that look, this is a cubic equation, you can't do much about it, but wherever it turns, let's do a construction. Huh. And then it will be a good approximation to the true picture. You cannot get infinite points, so let's do a construction. Let's start from here, and wherever the liquid, uh, liquid phase starts, the first appearance of the liquid phase occurs, let's start from here and draw a line so that the area in the bottom half and the top half they cancel out. Okay. So that is just known as Maxwell's construction. So how we can just remember we can say that we should have equal areas. Yeah, so let me just draw it over here and this is how it is going, right? Okay, all I want to ensure is that these areas, I cut a line so that these areas are equal, that is all. Fine. That is fairly simple, right? And the rest of the rest of the graph remains the same. The rest of the positions, I don't have any problems. Rest of the solutions. See, at other points, what happens to the other two solutions? The cubic equation, right? What happens over here? I have only one solution. Imagine it's right. We don't have to really bother about those. And the other thing is that at this point. Which shows the critical temperature. You know what kind of a point is this? These are three. These three are equal. That's true. It's an inflection point. So mathematically, you know how to get the inflection point. Take the first derivative to be zero. Take the second derivative to be zero. And you get the inflection. Point. Okay. What Van der Waals also suggested was something really fabulous. Although it is just phenomenological, okay, it is just that all the data fits over here, but it is something very interesting. What he said was that take variables, take variables normalized by their critical constants, okay. So <coughs> a relative pressure which is equal to pressure divided by critical pressure 
a relative volume which is volume divided by critical volume and temperature which is temperature divided by critical temperature take these values and <coughs> plot the compression factor with respect to for example reduced pressure uh, at different values of reduced temperature and everything falls on the same line right it's a kind of a universal behavior and why this is so this is just because that these critical values are intrinsic to the gases gases know their critical values right gases don't care for your kelvin scale or bar or atmosphere but they know their own standard right and that's why this happens. in fact this you can actually calculate using the van der waals equation i'll just tell you the final result over here that what you get is PR is equal to eight times TR by three VR minus one minus three by VR square. Right. So you see, this is the relative pressure. This is the relative volume. This is the relative temperature. There is no other term coming over here. So it really this nothing very uh, specific to the gas that comes into this equation. Right. And that's why you get such a universal behavior. But uh, I would suggest that you do this calculation. Okay. Use the Van der Waals equation and substitute for PR, PR, and VR, and get to this value. And it's a fairly straightforward substitution. Okay. So I kind of I think yeah. In fact, this this has a name. So let me just write that. It's called principle of corresponding states. Right. Any problem with this? Any problem? Any problem in understanding this one? equation use these substitutions right instead of pressure write pr times pc do do a substitution what you will arrive at finally is this for this equation okay starting from the van der waals equation once you got this you see that there is no no particular value that's you know very specific to any gas it's just pr tr and vr the equation contains only these three terms from the van der waals equation you would expect that if i plot such a thing i would naturally get one single value for pr versus vr versus pr right <coughs> ah this is different uh, temperatures right ah I, it's it's mentioned in the caption but i should just write here uh so that's that's one reduced temperature that's another reduced temperature that's another one and you see the compression factor must go towards unity as we approach the ideal gas so pr3 must be the largest temperature it's nothing pr is nothing but p by <clears throat> yes so one thing is that the shortfall of the van der waals equation is that it cannot explain cd so it cannot explain points like cde 
there will be many such points at many different temperatures, right? If I go at a, uh, any, any temperature below 31, I can liquefy, right? So if I'm at 25, there will be a point somewhere above this. If I'm at 15, there will be a point somewhere below, right? From there, it starts liquefying. Now, the thing is that Van der Waals equation can give you only three values of the volume for a given pressure, at the most. Yeah? And if it gives you three values, that means it's going to be something like this, then it cuts across and then goes back. Right? That's not possible. That's a shortcoming of the Van der Waals equation. Okay. So how do we deal about it, about with this? How do we correct this thing? So Maxwell said, okay, let's make this construction. It's called the Maxwell construction. Let's take the point where the upper area and the lower area are equal and just make that construction. That's all. Nothing more to it. Okay. So how do you use that construction? How do you use that construction? How do you use that construction? Okay. Yeah. So how do you use that construction? How do you use that construction? How do you use that construction? So let's see this particular case. Okay. So let me use this color. Now, <clears throat> over here we have this Van der Waals loops. These are called Van der Waals loops. See, these things are spurious, right? It's just that we have used the theory which does not match the experiment and then we want to correct it ad hoc. <coughs> we know because the, the experiment gives us a straight line. Now, and this color is giving me a curve like this. Goes up, goes down, goes up. I have to find a point such that these two areas are equal. Let's say I start calculating these areas and I find that somewhere over here these two areas are equal, right? So, which is not, of course, forgive me for my artistic skills, but let's say these two areas are equal. Right. So, all I do is I ignore this part and just use this part. That's all. The thing is that the liquid and the gas are in equilibrium. And they continue to be in equilibrium because once the liquid state has formed. Right. Suddenly that condensation takes place, right? Piston drops by itself all the way up to this point, and then you need to apply pressure to condense the liquid. Okay, so Maxwell's construction is something that really you don't have to understand it too much, but it's just a procedure which you need to know. Yeah. Not much. What you get is that how to correct for the Van der Waals equation in explaining the isotopes. Okay. There's nothing more to it, really. Okay, so pretty much done with the gases. Anything which troubles you? Yes. Yes. So, you know, this, this is fine. So, let me make it green everywhere, which is correct, okay? So, sorry. So, that's fine and that's fine. Okay. Because I cannot have a loop, yeah? I cannot have an increase in volume with an increase in pressure or a decrease in volume with a decrease in pressure. That's unrealistic. But since Van der Waals equation, see, whatever mathematical model we choose, it's not an exact description of the physical reality. So there will be some shortcomings. 
is a big one. So the way to take care is really in a matter of time. Okay. Let me come back to that. <coughs> yes. Very much. Quantitatively, I'm not very certain how exactly it satisfies. There will be some errors, but qualitatively, very much. If you look at these, the next graph over here, these are all calculations from the Van der Waals equation. Okay, it does reproduce a very steep region. And it would because the volume is small. Volume is very small. This reduced volume is one. This is a very small volume over here. And V minus N B is what we are taking. Right? V is essentially four times the volume of a molecule. Right? I've not discussed it because I don't think that's required, but V is essentially four times the volume of a molecule. And uh, multiplied by the Avogadro number, right? So that becomes a substantial volume when your total volume is very small. So that means that there are really big interactions between the molecules. So the interactions really come. And if it's steep, that means you can't bring it closer which means you have more and more of repulsive interactions. Yes. Only then it will become very simple. Sure, sure. So, uh, is there any particular reason for uh, selecting a like, uh, line which divides the no. in equal area? It just says equal areas. That's all. That's all. See, it's just an ad hoc construction. So, don't bother about why it's done. It's just a method to say, okay, because we cannot get the correct thing, what do we do in this region? Let's do something. Okay. That's Perhaps he thought the most logical. Maybe there's a reason to it, but I don't know. Okay. So if we're done with this, then we'll proceed towards the first law. Maybe I can 